John was sent to give an eyewitness account, a testimony, in the highest court of law about the identity of a man who is the embodiment of the Logos. A man from eternity who is the force that holds all things together. A man without a maker. The Greek philosophers postulated that there was this invisible force that clearly there's this puzzle piece over here and we understand, we can see it just by studying nature. There's some language that fish understand and they all communicate. We don't get it, but it's clear just by studying. There's some language about music. They studied music. They got it. And they said, there's this puzzle piece and there's this puzzle piece. There's got to be some kind of a a logic, an intelligence that makes all of these puzzle pieces like fit. They're not, they're not separated. They're, they're one. They're all telling some story. They couldn't figure it out. But they knew it was there because they studied and they thought and they saw it. They called that the Logos. And it was invisible. But they knew it was there. What keeps the stars in their courses? The Greeks would say, well, obviously, it's the Logos. What is it that makes it so that the seasons always happen as they should? The Greeks would say, it's the Logos, duh. What keeps the ocean from coming out of its basins? It's the Logos. There's a logic and a reason. It's, it's the universe, and it's, it's good, and it's eternal, and it's making sure everything stays in order. That was their answer for everything. But listen, friends. Oh, please listen. It was Plato who took this thought to its final conclusion. Look what Plato eventually went on to write. He said, God is not a being, but a force, a pure eternal essence. He is the divine, the logos. And now here it is, look. It may be that someday there will come forth from God a word. A Logos, who will review all mysteries and make everything plain. Wait a second, Plato. Who? You're, you're saying that this invisible force, it's a who? And it's going to come one day. He is going to come one day and make everything plain that you can't understand? In a stroke of inspired divine Genius. The Apostle John seized this idea that the Greeks had brought to the furthest point a thinker can think without revelation. He took it and he wrote this. In the beginning was the Logos and the Logos was with God and the Logos was God. And the Logos, it became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John is saying, listen, you Greeks. All the thinking that you've done to try to understand this mystery that you see in the universe and you know this can't happen by accident. There's clearly a mind behind this, but you can't understand it. He has come, and we have seen him in the flesh. John would say, Plato, you postulated that one day there may come from God a revelation in the person of a man who will reveal all the mysteries that we haven't been able to figure out in our limited understanding and our ability to think. Plato, John would say, he has come and he has a name. And his name is Jesus. John knew a real human man born of a woman. Just like you had a mom, have a mom. This man had a mom. And here's the amazing thing. The man who was born from that mom made his own mom. <laughs> it's amazing. Look what John says, beginning in verse 1 and 2, and we're also going to look at verse 15. 
In the beginning. Anybody know any other book that starts that way? If you do, yell it out. Genesis. John is quoting Genesis. He's quoting Genesis. In the beginning means, this is important, so you don't just think, well, in the beginning of John's life. No, 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 no. In the beginning of space-time, the universe that we know. In the beginning was the Word, the Logos. And this Word, this Logos, was with God. And this Word, this Logos, was God. And then look at the next word, the next word. Everybody say that word. He. he. Hang on, John. Where did you get he from? Why are you applying a male personal pronoun to this word? How can a word have a male personal pronoun? So we know he's talking about a person here. In the beginning was this word, this logos, and it's a he. He was in the beginning with God. Now skip down to verse 15. John, this isn't John the Apostle, this is John the Baptist. John the Baptist bore witness about him, and he cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. Here's what he's saying. Listen to this. Uh, if Dave Jones was up here, Dave Jones is a little older than me. So Dave could say, or I could say, Dave Jones was born before me, but I existed before Dave Jones. You'd say, Luke, you're off your rocker. That's what John the Baptist was saying. I'm older than Jesus. And yet he was before me. That's the first claim that John makes about this man that he knew, a very real man from Nazareth. The second claim that John makes is that he has no maker, <laughs> but is himself the maker of all things. Now, this is a wild statement. Here's what you're going to learn. John knew a real human man. I have to keep stressing that. Born of a woman, and he himself is the maker of everything that exists. Verse 3 through 10, 3 and 10. Look at this on the screen. This is John speaking. He says, All things were made through him. And without him, without this word, was not anything made that was made. Skipping to verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. If the ancient Greeks who were at Mars Hill were to hop in a time machine and come today and look at <laughs> the American highest thinkers, the ones who write the science textbooks that end up in a public school system, they would literally laugh them off the stage because they would say, <laughs> you guys are thinkers? <laughs> You atheist, secular scholars, you're the thinkers of this age, and you're trying to teach people that something can come out of nothing? That's not intellectual thought. That's not logic. That's the antithesis of logic. Not only that, but you're trying to teach people that order, like we see in the creation, can come out of chaos? That's not intellect. That's the opposite of intellect. As a matter of fact, they would often talk about how it's the height of insanity, madness, to think that all of this happened without some intelligent designer. That's what real thinkers land at, by the way. And so, look at this again, the, the founder of the Logos concept. He said this, All things come into being through the Logos, this intelligence that we can't see. And all things are governed by this Logos and perish according to its command. So whoever this, whatever this Logos is, when it says live, things live. And when it says die, things shut off. They figure that out by studying science, nature. The Logos is what gives order and meaning to the universe. And without it, all things would be in what, church? Yes. It's true. It's obvious, isn't it? They arrived at that with no revelation from God. Just studying nature. John's second claim about the man he knew for three years was that he has no maker and is himself the creator of everything. And now the practical person in the room is going, why is this practical? That's all high thought. Make it practical for my life. Here's the practical behind the theological. Only a maker who's also a man could ever grasp your pain 
and fully understand. Listen to me. In the dark night of your deepest despair, which if you haven't had one of those, you will. In the night where you're in so much pain, you can't even sleep. Can I ask you, what good is a creator whom you can't identify with? And better yet, what good is a creator who can't identify with you? What will sustain you in those evenings when you are in the deepest depths of despair is knowing that you have a creator who not only you can identify with because he became one of us, but who can identify with you and who understands pain. Hey friends, Pastor Luke just wanted to take a quick second to say thank you for watching the video. If you found it to be edifying and encouraging, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. For more videos and sermons like this or to watch the full length sermon, you can find it right here on our YouTube channel or by visiting our website, www.hopeoflbi.com.